defense was at the center of the last European Union Council. This was the culmination of intense work on EU security and defense with the preparation of the European Defense Industrial Strategy and the creation of a new fund to step up their military support to Ukraine. EU took stock also of the progress made in implementing the strategic compass. Power politics are reshaping the world. With the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine, the war that has flared up again in the Middle East, coups in the Sahel, tensions in Asia, the world witness at the same time the return of rolled conventional wars and the emergence of a new, hybrid warfare characterized by cyber attacks and the weaponization of anything, from trade to migration. This deteriorating geopolitical environment is putting Europe in danger, as Joseph Borrell anticipated when presenting the strategic compass, the new EU defense and security strategy, in 2022. For years ago, when the world was facing the COVID-19 pandemic, many said that the EU was living a Hamiltonian moment because EU decided to issue a common debt to alleviate the consequences of this crisis as Alexander Hamilton did after the US independence war. EU is now probably entering a Demosthenes moment, in reference to the great Greek politician mobilizing its fellow Athenian citizens against Macedonian imperialism 2,400 years ago, they are finally becoming aware of the many security challenges in our dangerous environment. What is EU doing to address these multifaceted threats? The month of March marks two anniversaries, the third of the creation of the European Peace Facility EPF, and the second of the adoption of the Strategic Compass. These tools have been central to the geopolitical awakening during the last years. It is the right moment to reflect on what has been done and where EU is heading on security and defense. Supporting Ukraine militarily in an unprecedented way, the European Peace Facility EPF, is an intergovernmental and extra-budgetary EU fund. It was established in 2021 to allow EU to support their partners with military equipment which was not possible via the EU budget. EU started with 5 billion euros, and today the financial ceiling of this fund stands at 17 billion euros. While it was not originally created for this purpose, the EPF has been the backbone of EU's military support to Ukraine. So far, they have used 6.1 billion euros from the EPF to incentivize the support to Ukraine by EU member states, and, with them, the EU has delivered in total 31 billion euros in military equipment to Ukraine since the beginning of the war. And this figure is increasing every day. Thanks to these funds, EU sustained their military support to Ukraine. Among other actions, by this summer, EU will have trained 60,000 Ukrainian soldiers, donated 500,000 artillery shells to Ukraine, and by the end of the year, it will be more than 1 million. Additionally, the European defense industry is also providing to Ukraine 400,000 shells through commercial contracts. The Czech initiative to buy ammunition outside the EU comes in addition to these efforts. However, it is far from being enough and EU has to increase both the capacity of production and the financial resources devoted to support Ukraine. Last Monday, at the Foreign Affairs Council, EU has decided to create a new Ukraine assistance fund within the EPF, endowed with 5 billion euros, to continue supporting Ukraine militarily. Josep Borrell has also proposed last Wednesday to the Council to redirect 90% of the extraordinary revenues from the Russian immobilized assets into the EPF to increase the financial capacity of the military support for Ukraine. Reinforcing EU's global security and defense partnerships. But the European Peace Facility does not only help Ukraine. So far, EU has used it to support 22 partners and organizations. Since 2021, they have allocated close to 1 billion euros to operations led by the African Union and regional organizations, as well as the armed forces of eight partner countries in Africa. In the Western Balkans, they are supporting regional military cooperation, as well as Bosnia and Herzegovina and North Macedonia. EU is also supporting Moldova and Georgia in the eastern neighborhood, and Jordan and Lebanon in the southern neighborhood. Since the beginning of Josep Borrell's mandate, EU has launched nine new missions and operations under the Common Security and Defense Policy CSDP. The last one, Operation Aspides in the Red Sea and Gulf region to protect commercial vessels, has been set up in record time. With Operations Irene in the Mediterranean, Atlanta near the Horn of Africa and the coordinated maritime presences in the Gulf of Guinea and the Indian Ocean, EU is becoming more and more a global maritime security provider. EU also launched last year two new civilian missions in Armenia and in the Republic of Moldova. 
However, EU's missions in Niger had to be suspended due to the military coup and their military mission in Mali has been put on hold. EU is currently reconsidering the form of the support they can offer to their partners in the region. In this context, EU has set up last December a new type of civilian military initiative to help their partner countries in the Gulf of Guinea fight the terrorist threats stemming from the Sahel. EU has also reinforced their cooperation with NATO in various key domains such as space, cyber, climate and defense and critical infrastructures. They have broadened and deepened their network of tailored bilateral security and defense partnerships with Norway, Canada, as well as countries in the eastern neighborhood, Georgia, Moldova, Africa, South Africa, Rwanda, Indo-Pacific, Japan, Republic of Korea, Australia, and Latin America, Chile, Colombia. The first security and defense Schumann Forum in March last year, bringing together security and defense partners from more than 50 countries, was a success. EU will build on this when they meet for the next Schumann Forum on the 28th and the 29th of May. Enhancing the capacity to react to crises abroad. One of the main deliverables foreseen by the strategic compass was the creation of a new EU rapid deployment capacity to be able to quickly react autonomously to crisis situations, for instance to evacuate Europeans in case of an emergency like in Afghanistan in August 2021 or in Sudan in April 2023. It will become operational next year, but to prepare for it, EU organized the first ever EU military live exercise last October in Cadiz in Spain. It involved 31 military units, 25 aircrafts, 6 ships and 2,800 personnel for member states armed forces. A second live exercise will take place at the end of the year in Germany. A new crisis response center is also now operational in the EEAS to coordinate EU activities in case of emergencies, including the evacuation of European citizens. EU is also strengthening their military and civilian headquarters in Brussels. Investing more in defense together in boosting the EU defense industry. At home, EU also need to invest much more and help their defense industry to increase its production capacities. There is no other solution if they look at the magnitude of the defense needs for Ukraine but also for EU's member states that need to replenish their stocks and acquire new equipment. EU member states are already spending significantly more on defense with a 40% increase of defense budget over the last 10 years and a 50 billion euro jump between 2022 and 2023. However, the 290 billion euro EU defense budget in 2023 only represents 1.7% of their GDP under the 2% NATO benchmark. And in the current geopolitical context, this could be seen as a minimum requirement. However, the global amount of EU's expenses is not the only figure they have to follow carefully. To use EU's defense expenses efficiently, they also have to take care of filling gaps and avoiding duplications. As Josep Borrell have already said in many occasions, EU need to spend more but also better, and better means together. In 2022, the European armies have invested 58 billion in new equipment. For the fourth year in a row, it exceeded the benchmark of 20% of the defense expenses. However, only 18% of these defense investments are currently done in a collaborative manner, far below the 35% benchmark set by EU member states themselves in 2007. Since the start of the Russian War of Aggression, 78% of the equipment bought by EU armies came from outside the EU. They are also lagging behind in their investments in research and development. That is the reason why Josep Borrell presented earlier this month together with the Commission the first ever European Defense Industrial Strategy. EU need to incentivize much more joint procurement, better secure EU's security of supplies, anchor the Ukrainian defense industry in Europe and organize a massive industrial ramp-up. They also need to catch up on new military technologies like drones or artificial intelligence. With its innovation hub, the European Defense Agency will continue to play a key role in these efforts. To succeed, EU will need to ensure much better access to finance for the European defense industry, notably by adapting the European investment bank lending policies. They should also foresee issuing common debt to help finance the major necessary investment effort in defense capabilities and defense industry, as they did to face the COVID-19 crisis. However, EU still have a lot of work to do to reach an agreement on that subject. Finally, EU will also need to reinforce their defense when it comes to hybrid and cyber threats, foreign information manipulation and interference and resilience of their critical infrastructure. As detailed here, a lot has already been done in recent years, however Joseph Burrell am very much aware that a lot more remains to be done to match the magnitude of the threats they are facing. EU need a leap forward in European defense and European defense industry. Read more on our website, worldnewworld.com.